UK Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. Okay. In Microsoft Office, in the Excel, when you try to create a new new workbook, when you say when it's a new, it will be called as a workbook. So what happens? What are the XLS we created that is called as a workbook in the terms of XLS? What do we call XLS as the workbook? It's a workbook. Okay, workbook. Workbook I call as part of XLS term terminology. I call XLS as a workbook. Okay, fine. Workbook. So workbook contains how many sheets? Workbook contains how many sheets? The workbook contains by default three sheets. The workbook contains by default three sheets. Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. You try to open any kind of workbook, you try to open any kind of Excel, it has three sheets only. Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. These are by default it will be coming. And also, these sheets are having an index of starts from 0, here it will start from 1, here it will start from 2. Just for understanding, I am just writing it here, but actually the index of the sheets is 0, 1, 2, or else you can give the name of the each and every sheet. Suppose for example, this sheet I want to give the name as input data. Okay, so when you try to read the data, when you try to read the data from the sheet 1, because we try to maintain the data in the sheet 1 only, when you try to read the data from the sheet 1, you can use index as 0 or else you can give the ind you can give the name as sheet name as input data. Okay, again I am repeating, in the XLS, there is a workbook, workbook contains 3 sheets, if you want to refer the first sheet, you can use index or else you can use the sheet name. Okay, workbook is done, sheet is done. Or book contains three sheets and they refer to index or sheet name. Cool. And each and every sheet contains rows. Each and every sheet contains rows. Each and every sheet contains columns. So sheet contains rows, sheet contains columns. Okay, so then we call the data stored in the Excel in cells, is, is cells, data is stored in Excel as cell, this is 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 cell, all these are cells. So how do you read a particular cell? By using a row, comma, column. Suppose for example this one, how do you read this? Row, comma, column. How do you read this cell? Row, comma, column. How do you read this cell? Row, comma, column. So first what you will do? You try to read the workbook. Try to read the sheet name. Try to read the number of rows and number of columns which has data. Then try to read the each and every cell and try to store it in an array. That's what I am doing. You are getting what I am saying? Store the data 
in the first you try to read the power book read the sheet read the number of rows and columns which has data okay then store this data by reading in cell in an array that's a concept let me write the logic for this see i'm going to write the word logic uh, let's see forgot to add a jxl jar to this project i am going to add this jar file to the project let's see how to add it right click on the project go to build path configure build path go to external jars go to selenium java selenium and go to miscellaneous jar i am adding jxl 2.6 jar which is available in my laptop I added this which is added here as a reference library I'll say okay so you can see this is part of the reference libraries you see here JXL is already added here somewhere right okay it is added in the end okay because I'm not showing it you already know how to add this jar files to the build path okay fine so workbook W is equal to workbook dot Okay, fine. So what is the workbook here? Are you able to see small A? I think everybody is able to see small A. This is small A it is showing there, cap, in caps lock. This is small A it is showing. If everybody is able to see or not see, the small A it is showing. Okay, so workbook is an abstract class. Abstract classes, we cannot create an instance. So workbook is an abstract class. That's the reason abstract class dot static method so in order to access static method how do you access using class name dot static method name like right? that's the reason they have written as workbook dot get workbook and we are passing a parameter of file so which 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 workbook like you know from which file you want to read the workbook the file name is input data dot xls you try to read the data from this xls okay and get the workbook please give me the workbook of it I'll store it in a W. So W contains workbook. Okay, W contains workbook. So workbook contains how many sheets? So I'll try to read the first sheet using index or the name. So I'll use index now. Yeah, A is abstract class only. Okay, W dot get sheet means what? I got the first sheet and I showed the stored in a one object called sheet. S H E W E T. Fine. So everybody is able to follow, right? Get the verb book, get the sheet. And then, yeah, get the sheet, get the verb book. Now, in the sheet, you will be having rows and columns. How many rows, how many columns are there? four rows three columns right sheet sheet is nothing but a sheet one sheet two sheet three that's why i told you right workbook contains sheets sheet one sheet two sheet three right 
So when I say sheet dot get rows, I'll get the number as four. When I say sheet dot get columns, I get the number as three because four rows of data, three rows of col three columns of data. So let me print and see. So when I print sheet dot get rows gives what four sheet dot get columns column gives three. So oh, we have seen how do we read rows, how do we read columns, number of rows, number of columns. Now we are going to create an array, two dimensional array because I know the size. When you would go on to go and create an array, we have to mention the size. That's the reason I didn't create any array. So I'll create an array now. See. Okay. When you want to store the data in an array, first you have to mention what is the array name, what kind of objects you want to store in an array, okay, and what is the dimension of the array. So this and all as part of the array syntax we have to mention. I am going to store string object, I am going to store four rows and three columns of data, that is the dimension of the array. So I am going to define the name of the array as input data, that is what I have to mention. Okay. So once you mention that also, we have to read the get sheet is the index of 0. Index of 0 is the first sheet. 0 the first index. Okay. So now I am going to write a logic to read the data from the XLS. Okay. And store in the two dimensional array called input data. So let me just go and write the logic. See the logic now. for int i is equal to 0, I am going to write a for loop, for loop everybody knows the syntax, right, for initialization, condition, increment or decrement, so I am just writing the same thing, the condition is i less than rows, So int i is equal to 0, i less than rows, int i j is equal to 0, j less than columns. So we one for loop for the rows, iterate the loop till the rows is empty, iterate the loop till the columns is empty. So one for loop for rows, one for loop for columns. So because we have rows and columns available. Done. So now as I told you, if you want to get a particular cell, we have to pass a row and column. Right? So I will do the same thing. So I have sheet. So I can fetch the cells from the sheet, see, 